Greetings everyone. This video is about the many uses of the transmission line arrester. Make sure you take a look at the paper of the same title that this clip is based on. It was not realized at the time, but the 1992 introduction of the Polymer House Transmission Line Arrester, also known as the TLA, was clearly a game changer in the practice of lightning protection of transmission lines. Overhead shield wires had been the only cost-effective means of mitigating the effects of lightning until that moment. Since then, the TLA has shown its value not only in reducing lightning-induced outages, also in numerous ways which we will discuss here. So what is a transmission line arrester? A TLA is an arrester mounted in parallel with a transmission insulator to prevent flashover of the insulator during various transient events. They come in various voltage ratings, energy ratings, and many mounting configurations. The most common use of the TLA is the prevention of insulator backflash on shielded transmission lines. In this graphic, you see how the backflash is created during a strike. When the overhead ground wire intercepts a lightning stroke, it conducts the current to ground via its downground. If the tower ground resistance is too high, the voltage at the base of the phase insulator will increase. If the voltage increases enough, it can exceed the withstand level of the insulator and cause a flashover from the tower to the phase conductor. When the stroke is over, which is about 100 microseconds, the ionized air along the insulator remains. This ionized air provides a perfect path for the normal system AC voltage to then flash over from the phase to earth. This second flashover is the issue. From the second flashover, power system current begins to flow to ground and can only be interrupted by a breaker back at the substation. This breaker operation then causes the momentary outage on the system which we see as a blink. If the overhead ground wire is struck and transmission line arresters are installed, the scenario is much different. Should the voltage at the base of the insulator rise as it did in the last case, instead of a flashover of the insulator, the arrestor clamps the voltage across the insulator to levels below its flashover. During this clamping action, the lightning current flows backwards through the arrestor onto the phase conductor. This lightning current is only a few thousand amps in amplitude and is easily handled at the station by the station class arresters mounted there. After the stroke is over, the arrestor turns off and the system is restored without a fault or breaker operation. No blink on the system, no potential damage to the insulators. There are many options when mounting a transmission line arrestor. One of the more important consideration is lead management. Because disconnectors are used to isolate a failed arrestor from the line, care must be taken to ensure that when the disconnector operates, the attached line cannot touch the phase conductor. There's more about this in the paper. When arrestors are used in conjunction with the overhead ground wire, the energy requirements of the arrestor are quite low. This is because 80% of the stroke current is routed to ground via the downground. However, if the arresters are used on unshielded lines, such as we see in this photo of a 69 kV line in Lakeland, Florida, higher energy may be needed. Theoretically, if there is a 16 Coulomb discharge into an unshielded transmission line that has arresters on each tower, the current and charge is shared very well. In simulations, we find that even with a 16 Coulomb stroke, only two coulombs is transferred by the nearest arrestor. Each tower away from the struck tower conducts current to share in the event. It is for this reason that the top arrestor in the Lakeland scheme is of the same energy rating as the lower two. Their arrestor failure rate to this date has not been an issue for them. One of the biggest concerns of those using transmission line arrestors for the first time is the long-term reliability and maintenance of the arrestor. There was a time when gap silicon carbide arresters had questionable reliability. However, in this mature MOV arrestor era, reputable suppliers have consistently achieved arrestor failure rates that are close to that of the insulator in the PPM range. 
Look at the reliability record of your existing equipment MOVE type arresters. You will be surprised at how low a failure rate you are experiencing if you remove the old porcelain gap arresters from that population. As stated earlier, the most common use of the transmission line arrestor is for lightning protection to lower momentary outages. This is discussed in more detail in the paper. Other applications included in the paper are overhead ground wire elimination, as we see in the Lakeland application, right-of-way width reduction by controlling switching surge amplitudes, loss reduction with the elimination of overhead ground wire, cost reduction with the elimination of the overhead ground wire, compact lines in urban areas, line terminal arresters, and many more. As you can see, there are many applications of transmission line arresters available to the line owners and users. To learn more about the details of this topic, refer to the paper that this video is based on. This video has been sponsored by the Surge Arrestor section of the National Electrical Manufacturers Association. As always, they urge you to know what is possible and to keep on learning.